Hey, what's up guys? Here we are, hole three here. And we're going to take a look here. Again, we're going to try to get it up here as far as possible. Just see what that looks like so we know for the future. Regardless if we get up exactly where we need it to. One of the things that you'll see, I'm very close to the right edge. So I'm probably going to do some kind of overplay here on the original tee shot. I think it's somewhere around the neighborhood of nine rings. No curl because I have so much secondary effect pushing to the right. So let's just see what this looks like. It looks like it did just clip the rough there. But all in all, not too bad. It's rolling down. Keep it in the fairway. So as you can see, nice look at this first hole for the first time. Now, one of the things that I like to do with these wedges here is I like to size up. There's my max club. So if I was to kind of just kind of split this up into intervals, as you can see I'm doing here. So, you know, I'm basically splitting my screen and just saying, okay, the halfway point, that's kind of where this shadow is in the fairway that you see there. The very rightmost part is kind of 50%. And I can subdivide even farther and say, well, the creek looks like about 75%. So I'm going to need to be at least probably about 90 here minimum. Because I'm, the pin is kind of 90% in that span, but we're going to be pulling up towards this max line as well with our ring adjustment. So I'm definitely thinking in the 90s. So that's just kind of a preview to help you guys with percentage based. So other than that, I'll typically, I might try to keep my ball guide. You can see it's coming back to the right a little bit. I'm expecting that to kind of stretch out and go to the left a little bit. So I'm trying to anticipate that for the large wind. So I want to kind of play a spot adjustment, but let the natural wind effect switch to make it come straight back into the hole. So that's more or less what we're focused on. Also keep in mind, you know, pro D1 ball, that's what I'm going to use. And additionally, we're going to be very careful. You can see that the relationship is not very linear with the wedge. So with that in mind, you have to be very critical about the percentages that you end up picking. So I'm thinking somewhere around here. Let's just try this. Right around 18 rings. And let's just see what this looks like. So there's 10, there's 18. Keep in mind, you know, this app is de it's developed and designed to uh, basically just get you a good approximation. You're still going to have to learn, you know, those subtleties. The difference between 92% versus like 96%, and you can see it's doing exactly what I said. I pretty much did a spot adjustment, but I needed just a little bit more right hook on it. As you can see, my spot adjustment was pretty good. But keep in mind, that's at the 94% marker here. Now, let's say I was down here, and I would have only adjusted this much. Look at the difference. You know, it's almost a ring difference. So all of these are going to play in huge. And if I wanted to make that, I either needed to put just a little bit more right hook on, or I needed to increase my adjustment maybe into the 96% range. So all the app is really doing is it's giving us a good estimation so the more that you get familiarized with those app, uh, estimations, the better that you can potentially make holdouts in the future. So good luck out there, guys, and I'll, get, I'll see you guys on the next one.